What is important right now is that we do support Ukraine and do whatever it takes in order to Ukraine to regain its freedom, independence and sovereignty. So that's the key and we're doing that in concerted efforts much more now than six months ago. What we're actually doing now in the Rammstein format led by, by Secretary Austin from the United States is that we're building capabilities. We're building battalions, we're building brigades and I think that's going to be crucial for the Ukrainians, not at least in Donbass in order to regain their territorial integrity and freedom and independence. So that's all our focus are on right now. And uh, my understanding is that Ukraine has specifically asked Sweden for mm -hmm. fighter jets. Mm -hmm. Are you going to give them some? Well, s listen, supporting Ukraine is really investing into our own security. We provided air defense, we provided uh, combat vehicle 90, we, we do training of, of also at Interflex and we do it in EU Man Ukraine, so we do a lot of that. Fighter jets is difficult because the ones we have we need to, to use in order to, to, uh, to maintain our territory all integrity. Uh, when I look at the Russian capabilities, they're severely downgraded when it comes to the land component right now. But when it comes to their assets, both the, in the air and on naval assets, are pretty much uh, unchanged. So therefore, uh, for right now, uh, Gripen is in the too hard to do box for me. So in essence, would you say that you are also slightly more concerned about Russia posing a threat to Sweden at this stage? Sure. What we take note of is that Russia has a very low threshold for the use of military force and it takes great political and military risk. And that's something we're cognizant about. And therefore Sweden together with Finland uh, could also file an application for, for NATO. And that's why we're so eager also to get into the alliance. And we think that we can be security providers to the alliance because we have assets and capabilities that can make NATO stronger. We have a strong air defense, we have patriots, we have Gripen fighters, we have submarines, we have a strong defense industrial base. There's no other country of 10 million who can produce submarines, fighter aircraft, very advanced combat vehicles and artillery systems for example. And we also have great Russia expertise in our intelligence community. And let me ask you about ammunition because there's a lot of talks mm -hmm. in Brussels about sure. coming together and mm -hmm. uh, uh, joint purchasing ammunition mm. to support Ukraine. How far in this process are we? Well, I think we're, we're making good progress and I think this is vital where the Ukrainians need uh, artillery munition and uh, of course we have a strong industrial base and several others in Europe as well. There's going to be an uh, informal defense ministers meeting in Stockholm between the 7th and the 8th of uh, March. I hope we're going to make progress there and we're looking at uh, some different ways of how we commonly can procure uh, munition. But I think it's crucial that we support Ukrainians with munition. Otherwise, if they don't have munition, they can't fight. And let me just get your final thoughts on the announcement from uh, Russian president yesterday saying that he is putting on pause this nuclear arms control deal with the mm. United States. How big of a move is this? Well, uh, I just can reiterate what the Secretary General of NATO said and that, that is it. We think this is a very unwise decision of Russia and it would be good if we could come back to the, to the start uh, agreement. So that's, uh, I think, the bottom line of it. But it's not really feasible to expect the Russian president to come to the table mm. when the tensions and there's a war effectively happening in Ukraine. This is a war that Russia started. This is an unprovoked illegal war that Russia started. These words about that we should try to de-escalate or seek dialogue, I, I think that would just reward Russia for, for and especially the Putin for his um, uh, misgivings and what he's been doing inside Ukraine. So we stand behind Ukraine and supporting Ukraine. Ukraine is really also about investing into our own security because if uh, Ukraine wins this war this is going to be good for security if Russia would win this war it would have disastrous geopolitical uh, military and security policy consequences for, for Europe uh, and for Sweden as well so we're with Ukrainians as long as it takes I just have one final question, Minister. We saw just hours ago a meeting in Moscow between Chinese uh, representatives and, of course, Russian, mm. the Russian authorities. How, how concerned are you about the role that China is playing in this conflict? Mm. Well, we take note of the fact that China and Russia are cooperating more now than before. Of course, they have a 
from fourth of February last year, they have an, what they call an unlimited partnership, and we, and we are aware of this. And uh, it would be very unwise for China, for example, to send military equipment to to support uh, uh, Russia into this war. So th there is an increased cooperation. We also notice that China and Russia sometimes exercises uh, together. Also, they've done it twice in the Baltic Sea. So just to clarify, you are concerned that China will support Russia in this military? Conflict. I think that will be very unwise. Uh, and so far, the level of that support has been limited. Uh, but if, it be, uh, if they would step up, it will, of course, affect their, their, the sanction regimes that we have against countries also who, so, who support uh, Russia, Russia in this war.